But first, another one of wrestling's fabulous fakes, the flying body block. When wrestlers fly out of the ring, the crowd goes wild. But this move could result in serious injury if there wasn't a secret. Here's how they do it. Skullduggery knows exactly when Slitter will be winging his way toward him. So he's waiting with open arms to catch him and break his fall. Just another happy landing when you know the secret. On the next twisted fate, an intense court case consumes a lawyer's life. yourself to bleed. Hey, open the fence! Open the fence! Hey, open the fence! Come on, step back! What's wrong with you? The granddaddy of all cons is when a wrestler is literally beaten to a bloody pulp. Hey, out of your man's hair! Out of the man's hair! Hey, what are you doing? Hey, hey, come here! Why? What's wrong with you? What are you doing? What do you think you're doing? Nothing! Are you saying is simply where the person cut himself in the ring? and bleed uh, just to, sh to add more realism to that, to that match. Wrestling fans think that the All-American boy has bloodied his opponent's head, but he had nothing to do with it. From this angle, we can see that Brash Knuckles doesn't come anywhere close to the turnbuckle. So why all the blood? Well, most people think it's fake. Well, here's a secret you wouldn't expect. That's a real cut. And the blood's real, too. But how did it get there? Let's take a closer look. As the ref steps in to check on Brash Knuckles' condition, he secretly passes off a tiny sliver of a razor blade wrapped in tape. How you doing, Matt Curtis? There's the handoff. If you didn't know where to look, you'd miss it. So much for the ref being impartial, but we already knew he was in on it. You may want to look away, because this part gets pretty gruesome. Hey, what are you doing? No. With a concealed blade, he secretly makes a small incision in the crease of his brow. He knows exactly where to cut. The wrong way is taking a long, broad stroke across the forehead. That results in long scars. You can get a tremendous injuries. The right way is you go to the bone and take a little, just a little jerk. It will bleed profusely, and then two or three days later, it'll be healed. It's hard to believe how far pro wrestlers will go to make the carnage look real and keep the fans coming back for more. A finishing move is a devastating move. It's a move where the fans in that crowd are like, Ugh. Damn, he ain't getting up. ultimate act of chicanery comes at the end of the match. It's called a finishing move, and it's guaranteed to bring the bout to a dramatic conclusion. One showstopper is called the backbreaker. A backbreaker is one of the unusual finishing moves in wrestling. The whole trick to this being you're falling down on your knee and just barely placing him on the knee to surprise you. Watch as the two wrestlers hold each other tightly so their weight will be evenly distributed. Now here's the secret. Private Payne actually lands on his feet, not on his back, as he'd have you believe. He feels no discomfort from this. It's a very easy move to take, and it's actually worse to the person doing the move than the person getting the move. Worse, because Colossus has the job of supporting all their weight. Private Payne clutches tightly to his opponent, so he can fully extend his legs. See how his feet take the impact. Although the illusion is a broken back, it's Colossus who's out of breath. Another spectacular finisher is the Hurricanrana. Slither tries to whip Skullduggery into the turnbuckle, but he ends up on the canvas. 
Skullduggery pretends to be dazed while Slither gets into position. Up and over, he buries him with the mighty Huracarana. And this match is over. There are a lot of different variations of the Huracarana. There's no doubt about it. It's very risky. It's risky, all right, unless you know the secret. Don't watch Slither, because he's not in charge here. It's Skullduggery who controls the move. Watch as he does a full forward flip, driving himself into the canvas. He makes sure to get full rotation so he doesn't squash his opponent. Meanwhile, Slither tucks his head in to avoid hitting the ring post. That's how it's done. Another finishing move is the leg drop. It's an elaborate maneuver where a wrestler appears to knock the air out of his opponent by crushing his windpipe. But here's how it really works. Your opponent slides back, you jump up in the air, you basically land on your butt, your leg will land harmlessly on your opponent's chest. Colossus' leg doesn't even touch Private Payne's neck. The move happens so fast, the fans can't spot the secret. It's Private Payne's cell job that puts it over the top. Watch again. Colossus goes down, but his knee is bent, creating an arch, and leaving his opponent plenty of breathing room. Here's another big finisher. Looks like the hero is about to lose, but a smart booker wouldn't let that happen. So the good guy employs a tricky move to make his comeback. The Bulldog Headlock. A bulldog headlock is where you have your opponent in a headlock, you jump up in the air, you land on your butt, and the idea behind that is it looks like you've driven your opponent's head into the mat. The secret? The opponent's head never hits the canvas. Watch again. As they go down, Skullduggery breaks his fall with his forearms. By the time the All-American boy lands, he's released his opponent. He breaks his own fall, and Skullduggery lands on his beefy arms. But he sells the move by grabbing his head and howling in pain. And now, the most dangerous finishing move in all of wrestling. The Pile Driver. Pile Driver is a devastating move. Even if you've taken the bump a thousand times, it doesn't take but one time, one mistake. You could be paralyzed. Here's how Private Payne avoids a broken neck. His head is tucked up between his opponent's thighs, so it doesn't really slam into the mat. Private Payne's shoulders take all the impact, not his head. When I land, I land vicious and hard, but most of the uh, shock will be to my butt and upper thigh area. Private Payne uses his arms to push himself up at the moment of impact. The fans think he's been pile-drived into the canvas head first. If you land the wrong way, you aren't going to get up from a pile driver. You'll probably just be stretched out. But you'll be safe as long as you know the secret. New Dan and Pure. Love the taste. Com slash shop for exclusive DVDs, books, and more. Real life, unfiltered. For professional wrestlers, pulling off the secrets is one thing. Taking all that punishment is another. The fact is, these men endure a tremendous amount of physical abuse in the ring. Over the years, they've suffered more bumps and bruises than they care to count. I've had a lot of injuries, and none of those injuries were fake. The times that I've been busted open, the scars that I have on my body, those are not fake. Those are all real. No one's supposed to get hurt, but people do get hurt. So, what you see in professional wrestling is real. I've had 16 concussions in one year. I've been hurt quite a few times, been in the hospital. Uh, quite a few times with stitches, broken ribs, fractured wrist, the list goes on. To be honest with you, I'm one of the lucky ones. You can get killed.
killed in wrestling. There's been a number of wrestlers that have, have had their necks broken. And if it wasn't for their physical conditioning, they would have died. It doesn't take but one time, one mistake, and your career could be over and possibly your life. I would challenge anyone from the crowd to get in the ring and do what we do for one day. Now that you know the secrets, you decide how fake is it. After watching this show, if you still got the guts to ask any pro wrestler, is it fake? Step in a ring and we'll show you how fake it is. Ah. Ah.